Now, looking at this one, uh, some of you guys may look at this and think, well, it's easier to just complete the square, especially since there's no coefficient of y squared. But it works the same with the quadratic formula as well. So let's identify what we have first. Uh, my a value is 1, so a is 1. My b value here is a positive 5. And then c is this 3 value. All right, so let's look at the equation. All right, so that's what we have. And yes, I did give myself some extra space to actually put these in. So I'm going to replace all my b values with that 5. So let's go and do that there. And let's go ahead now and replace all the a values with 1. <clears throat> And then finally, the C value with 3. All right. Then continuing with what x equals, we got a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 1 times 3 is 12. And this will all be over 2 times 1 is 2. So x equals, that's still a negative 5, but now we got plus or minus the square root of 13, 25 minus 12, and still over 2. All right. Um, yeah. That is as far as it goes. I, I mean, if we could go further, we would, but since we can't, we're in good shape just boxing that in. Of course, if you did want to write the two separate answers, I, I suppose here are some, some of the problems we see on this. Uh, just with the memorization stuff, right? Is sometimes we forget to make this a negative b, or if b is negative, to make it a negative negative, okay? Uh, something else we forget I, is this a, this a value in the denominator. Sometimes we just want to divide by 2, because a lot of our equations are going to have a coefficient of y squared that is 1. So just don't forget that stuff. Um, we'll get more in detail on this a little bit later.